Hello. Today we're going to focus on the substitution and income effects. To start, let's identify our utility function. In this case, we have a Cobb-Douglas type utility function. We can see that by the utility curve here, denoted as u equals x1 times x2. We're also given that we face prices of $1 for each good initially, and then our price of good one jumps to $4. We're also subject to a steady income of $8. Let's start by looking at the graph. I'll put x1, or the number of units of x1 we purchase, on the x-axis, and x2 on the y-axis. We'll first look at point A, which is our old utility subject to our old budget constraint. Point A is the point that we've been solving for since midterm one. It's our optimality condition given a utility function and a budget constraint. Now we have to dissect the price change that occurs in the problem. There's going to be two types of effects that occur due to this price change. The first will be the substitution effect. The substitution effect tells us that we should move away from the good that is now relatively more expensive and towards the good that is relatively less expensive. This means that we'll be somewhere up here. Notice that with the substitution effect, we stay at the same utility level as point A, as we're on the same indifference curve as before but we subject this indifference curve to the new prices. As for point C, or the income effect, we will now look at what happens to our budget constraint. Our new budget constraint should be parallel to the budget constraint that we made up for point B, but it should pivot along the x-axis point of the original budget constraint. This is because, looking in reality, if good one's price changes, the amount of good two that we can purchase, if we were to purchase all of good two, does not change. Every other point, however, means that we can buy less of both goods, now that we have relatively less purchasing power than before. As such, we will be at a new, lower utility curve than before. Thus, point C will be to the left of point A and B, but we're going to have to do the math to figure out if it's higher or lo lower than point A. Speaking of the math, let's take a look. To start, we're going to calculate point A. We see, again, that we have a Cobb-Douglas utility function, so our first step is to take our MRS. Remember that the marginal rate of substitution is the marginal utility of good one over the marginal utility of good two. In this case, that's gonna be x2 over x1. If you need additional help finding the MRS, you can look at the topic video a few topics back. As for our next step, we're gonna equate our MRS to the price ratio. This means x2 over x1 will equal p1 over p2. In this case, that means 1 over 1 or 1. So optimally, x2 equals x1. With that identity in mind, we can go to our budget constraint. Our budget constraint will be the price of good 1 times the quantity of good 1 plus the price of good two times the quantity of good two, which will then be subject to our income of $8. Seeing as good one equals good two, we can plug in x1 into this x2 of this budget constraint. This means x1 plus x1 equals eight. So two x1 equals eight or x1 equals four. And if x1 equals 4, x2 also equals 4. 
Thus, optimally for point A, we should see x1 equaling 4 and x2 equaling 4. Moving to point B, let's take our MRS equaling to our price ratio again. x2 over x1 will still be our marginal rate of substitution, seeing as our utility function did not change. However, our prices did change. They're now 4 over 1. This means that we're looking at the point with the new prices. But notice something else. We're facing the same indifference curve as before. This means we'll be at our old utility. So point B, or the substitution effect, will be the point at our old utility, but our new prices. Notice how the budget constraint is steeper than before. This is because our formula for the budget constraint is P1 over P2. P1 went up, so our slope of our budget constraint became relatively steeper. With this in mind, we can say x2 now equals 4x1 instead. Given that identity, we can go to our budget constraint and say 1, or 4 rather, x1 plus 1x2 equals our income. With point B, we invented an income to make this point purchasable. As such, we're not quite sure what our income is, and we will have to leave it as a variable. That means even if we were to plug in 4x1 for x2, we still wouldn't be able to solve for x1 or x2. This means we're going to have to turn to a different function, that being our utility function. We know that utility is equal to x1 times x2. We also know that the utility at point A equals the utility at point B, seeing as both points lie on the same indifference curve. This means we can solve for the utility at point A to set it equal to the utility at point B. At point A, we have four units of good one and four units of good two. So our utility at point A is equal to 16 which is also equal to our utility at point B. If our utility at point B is equal to 16, we can set this equal to x1 times x2. Seeing as x1 and x2 are equated such that x2 equals 4x1, I can plug in 4x1 into this x2 here. This means 4 times x1 squared equals 16. So x1 squared equals 4. Optimally for point B, x1 then equals 2. If x1 equals 2, I can plug in again to find that x2 equals 8. So our optimal point for point B would be x1 equaling 2 and x2 equaling 8. Given this, let's take a look and check real quick. Point B should be to the left and above point A. Here, we went two units to the left and four units up. So point B is in the appropriate area that it should be. Finally, let's take a look at point C. Point C gives us our new utility and our new prices. Again, let's take our MRS equal to our price ratio, or x2 over x1 equals 4 over 1. So x2 equals 4x1. I can plug this into our new 
budget constraint, which is going to be 4x1 plus x2, which equates to our income of 8. I can plug in 4x1 into this x2 here and get 4x1 plus 4x1 equals 8. So 8x1 equals 8, x1 equals 1 optimally. If x1 equals 1, x2 equals 4. This will be our optimal point for point C. At the point 1, 4, we are to the left of points A and B, and we're actually equivalent on the vertical axis to point A. OK, our final step is to compare our three points. Let's take a look. We're going to start with drawing out what our point A was one more time. That's going to be x1 equals 4, x2 equals 4. Point B was x1 equals 2, x2 equals 8. And point C was x1 equals 1, x2 equals 4. So our substitution effect will be point B minus point A. This means 2 minus 4, or negative 2 for good 1. We lost 2 units of good 1. And we gained 4 units of good 2. Our income effect is going to be C minus B. That means for a good 1, we lost 1 unit. And for good 2, we lost 4 units. In sum, our total effect will be C minus A. For a good 1, this means we lost 3 units. And for good 2, we stayed the same, or 0. There was no net change.